post video. Um, so today's video is looking at the um, Arteza gouache uh, paints and this is the 60 set of them. Um, I have been loving these paints so much and I've got so much to tell you about them as well, different techniques that I've been trying out uh, for ways that you can incorporate them easily into your card making. Um, ways that you can just use them um, to colour in images that you've drawn yourself or stamped images um, and also um, showing you how to create your own palette with them because these are all tube paints so they're a 12 millimeter tube and obviously you get the 60 colours of them um, and you get 12 that are pearlescent or metallic colours and then the other uh, 48 are all the gorgeous flat matte um, colours that are like indicative of gouache paints. Um, and there's all, there's also going to be a separate video on exactly how I set up my gouache palette as well. But I want to I'm going to show you in this video the palettes that I've set up. Um, I also wanted to just say about um, the prices of them as well. I don't usually do this in my up close videos, but I feel like um, you know it's it's a good thing to do to tell you how much things are. So this is the 60 set and the reason why I asked for the 60 set was because it's much better value to get the um, 60 set of gouache paints. If you, if you want to try their matte gouache and their metallic gouache um, you're basically paying like I think £4 more to get an extra 24 colours of matte colours um, when you buy the 60 set rather than buying the 24 set of matte colours and the 12 set of um, metallic ones and um, for an extra four pounds you're getting 24 more colors uh, when you buy the largest set of them and I don't think there's any harm in having this many colors because um, a lot of the extra colors that you're getting within those extra 24 that aren't in the original 24 set um, are mostly colors that have been um, muted down to pastel tones with white so if you've already got those colours mixed you're then going to be saving more of your white gouache for mixing with other colours from um, the set as well which is brilliant because um, white is quite an important part of working with gouache because it's um, you don't want to water it down too much you can to make it more into a watercolour but you don't usually want to because you might as well use a watercolour for that kind of thing so um, having the white helps you um, get a lighter colour without adding more water to your paint as well. So the whole set of um, 60, if you go on the Arteza UK website it's $41.99 or on the USA website it's $49.99 um, and the 24 set, um, so on the Arteza UK website the 24 set of these is $16.99 but the 12 set of metallics is $20.99 so if you add them together that's about £38 but for £42 you can get all of the um, extra 24 colours as well that's why I'm saying it's such a um, like if you want to try the matte and the uh, pearlescent metallic ones you might as well go for the 60 set because it's much better uh, value for your money um, and then on the Arteza USA website um, the full set is $49.99, the 24 set is $20.99 and the pearl colours are $25.98 as well. Um, they all, do also have them on Amazon, however um, Arteza were kind enough to send me these products to show you in a video and they've also given me another discount code as well. So if you use my links below the video um, and use this discount code when you check out you'll get an extra 10% off your order only from the um, UK and American Arteza websites though but it's Crafty Potential 2 and like I did last time I will um, put it on the screen down here and I'll also um, make it the first thing in the um, description box because I'm not 100% sure if it's a case sensitive um, code so it's easy for you to just um, copy and paste the code from there and this one is valued up until the 28th of August so again you've got a nice like four weeks um, to think about if you want any of these um, products and you, uh, take advantage of that code um, which is brilliant as well and then so also as well as them sending me the um, gouache colours I also asked for um, a few other bits and pieces which I'll probably just bring up throughout this video because um, I want this video to focus on the gouache colours but I'll also bring in um, some of the other bits and pieces that they sent me um, to show how well they work with these paints too. Um, so I also wanted to say um, 
Oh yeah, let me show you what's inside the box actually. So this is how they come. They don't come in this order because um, I ordered them into whatever order I wanted them to be in my uh, palettes that I was making. So I just sort of made my own kind of uh, rainbow order for the palette. And also as I was, um, look, you can see how much is in the tube. I've actually um, created two palettes with these and there's, you know, there's still tons left in the tube. So they really do go a long way. Um, and also as I was swatching, I did a little swatch of the colour on the outside of every single tube. There's only maybe three colours that don't completely match um, this band here, but I thought I might as well um, add it to all of the tubes so I know exactly how the colour dries. Because uh, one thing about um, gouache is the lighter colours dry slightly darker and the darker colours dry slightly lighter. So when you're mixing up um, your paints to create your... Uh, highlights and shadows on whatever you're colouring in, you want to make sure you mix your lighter colour lighter than you want it to be because it will dry slightly darker and you want to mix your darker colours slightly darker than you want them to be because they'll dry slightly lighter. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as well. I didn't, I didn't really find it was much of a problem actually. You kind of just, um, you know, if you've if you've mixed, say, a highlight colour and you've painted it on and it's dried too close to the middle sort of colour you were using, you can easily just mix up a bit more and add it over the top because the great thing about gouache is it's opaque. So um, um, I'll tell you the scale in a second, actually. But the um, So because of its um, opacity, you can layer it really easily. You don't want to add too thicker layers because um, they can crack. Like if you look on this tube here, I don't know if you can really see it, but because I put that on thickly on the outside of the tube, it's got a little crack in it. So when you're working with it, you want to add a tiny bit of water to get it to be nice and fluid and flow light nicely and give you clean lines with your brush. But you don't want to add too much water that it loses its opacity. Because um, with that opacity, the, the thing I really love about gouache, I hadn't used gouache for like 10 years because I, I remember using it when I was doing my art GCSE, but I only remember using it on one project where we had to draw our picture and divide it into four sections and paint one corner with each different thing and I don't think I ever properly got taught how to use gouache properly um, but what, the thing that I've been really 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 loving about it I've, I've never properly gotten on with watercolours but with gouache it's so much easier because you can work light to dark but you can also work dark to light so if you've added um, a shadow on something and it's too dark you can easily go back over it and completely cover it up with a lighter colour and it'll work perfectly and I'm going to show you a little example of why you might um, prefer gouache over watercolour as well just to show um, like the layering of a light colour on a dark colour because with watercolour I'm pretty sure it doesn't really work trying to layer a light colour on top of a dark colour but so this is how um, the paints come. You get the ten little things with um, six colours in each and you've, the when you get them they're all sort of muddled up a little bit and the pearl colours are um, mixed in with all of the other colours. So I separated mine out so I had all of my pearl colours in six of the little compartments. And um, so there's... From what I've um, heard about gouache and watercolours and acrylic there's like a scale of um, like how opaque they are really and the, the scale kind of goes professional watercolours which are um, designed to be very translucent uh, so that you can get that gorgeous um, layering um, technique of different uh, layers, thin translucent layers of watercolours to get that gorgeous um, look that lots of professional watercolour artists can get. Um, then you have student grade watercolours, then um, in the middle of watercolours and gouache, you have um, Japanese watercolours, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Ganzai Tambi watercolour pan set, um, and they are a Japanese watercolour, and they're more on the side of a gouache, so they are a lot of a, um, a thicker um, paint. So if you've ever used them before and wondered why they're not as transparent as um, another kind of watercolour, it's because they're more on the gouache side of a watercolour. And then um, in the scale you then get gouache and then you get acrylic gouache and then acrylic paint. And then the difference between um, gouache and acrylic gouache is that gouache is still um, reactive with water even when it's um, dried. But the acrylic gouache has the acrylic properties um, of acrylic paint. 
but the great thing about it is it dries matte. So normal acrylic paint, the majority of the time dries with a um, glossy plasticky finish, but um, an acrylic gouache would dry with a matte finish. But the gouache paints from Arteza are the water-based or water-reactive ones. So, um, you know, they're great for all of our kind of card-making things because you can... Um, have them out on a palette, reactivate them and come back to things as well, like come back to artwork you've been working on or something that you've coloured or a background that you've done. Um, yeah, so having them water reactive is brilliant as well. So, um, a lot of people like to work with gouache from the tube because it comes out with a really gorgeous creamy consistency. Um, and I was watching quite a few videos on how to make your tube gouaches into a watercolour palette. And a lot of people were saying um, gouache doesn't work well in a palette because um, when it dries, it cracks as it dries because of all the moisture coming out of it and it sort of um, contracts in the pan and breaks up into pieces. Um, and there are ways around it, like by adding honey and glycerin and things into them, but I, d I didn't feel like I wanted to go down that route. I wanted them to be the, like the paint that's in the tube, but ha without having the hassle of searching through 60 colours to try and squeeze out a little bit from those tubes. So, um, I just decided to give it a go, and it's worked perfectly. I made this palette um, three weeks ago now, and the paints are still lovely and juicy because of the way that I've been reactivating them. So, um, as I said in the beginning, you have 48 flat colours and 12 metallic colours. So I decided I wanted all of them in pan form. So I got a smaller um, 12 pan uh, empty watercolour set um, for the metallic colours and then I got a 48 half pan watercolour empty set um, for the rest of the matte colours and I thought I'd give you some prices on these as well. So these, I got them off of Amazon. They're the Atworth brand. I know they say Meaden on there but they they were under the Atworth brand because they seem to be um, cheaper um, and you can get them in a really pale pink or this gorgeous blue colour and the 48 one was 13 99 and this one was 8 99 and they come with the empty pans inside them and you can buy them in half pan or full pan so this would have 24 full pans or 6 full pans or 12 half pans, 48 half pans and um, this is what they look like so you can see um, I have been using this a lot in the last few weeks and you can see um, water droplets in there because I actually uh, sprayed these because I was using them earlier to um, reactivate them again um, I think the metallic ones do seem to dry harder and probably need more water sprayed into them to get them to reactivate to that lovely creamy consistency again but I haven't found any problems with these and um, there's a whole video that I've already filmed on how I set up this palette and I say in that why I've only filled them part of the way um, so that one I didn't know whether I was definitely going to like having them in the pan and I didn't want to waste all of my like half a tube of the colour so I only filled them to a small amount and also when they are a small amount you can add more water into them and leave them and then it will reactivate into that gorgeous creamy consistency as if you just squeezed it out of the tube as well so that's why I did that but this is my little 12 pan set um, of all of the metallic colours and you've got uh, pearl scarlet, pearl orange, pearl emerald green, pearl aqua blue, pearl purple iris, pearl bubblegum, bronze gold silver, pearl white, pearl eucalyptus and pearl noir um, and that was just the order I decided to put them in because I kind of wanted the rainbow of colours along the top and then more of the neutral tones um, along the bottom of the palette um, and these palettes are brilliant for um, mixing because they've got two lots of mixing wells on them as well so I've been really really enjoying having these palettes and then this is the 48 set this is all of the 48 um, flat colours that you're getting um, in that set of 60 and you've got a really gorgeous um, array of colours you've got about three reddy tones three orangey tones three or four yellowy tones lots of greens with different undertones to them as well. This one has been my favourite because I've been painting a lot of cactuses. Um, you might have seen, um, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, a couple of weeks ago when I was first playing with these, I was painting a lot of cactuses and I posted some photos of them. Um, you've got sort of gorgeous lime greens, you've got um, these more 
cool greens, warm greens, bluey greens. Um, you've got a gorgeous selection of blues in here as well. You've got a really deep purple and this wineberry is a really lovely colour. Um, you've got some pinks in here with this neon pink. It's not coming up neon on the camera but that is really neon pink, that peach red there. Um, yeah, it really doesn't show on the camera. Um, and then you've got these gorgeous ones which are kind of um, good for skin tones. I love these browns. This latte brown is my favourite. And I love the tan brown as well. Uh, then you've got sort of some of your um, original kind of colours like burnt umber and burnt sienna and stuff. And yellow ochre. You've got black in there. You've got grey. This gorgeous ice blue. Um, a taupey colour. And you also, you do get two whites. But in my pan uh, or in my set I swapped out... Um, two of the half pans and put a full pan of white in there as well um, yeah so uh, I wanted to show you this up close I have been using this this morning so you can see that they're all um, nice and wet in there the ones that seem to be drying out the most is this top row of the reds orange and yellows they tend to uh, when I've opened it up after not using it for a while like a couple of days or so. It tends to be these ones that have started to dry out. Um, this row seems to stay very nice and wet, which is brilliant. Um, but uh, when they have dried out a little bit and you come back to work with them and you want to spray the water in them, um, I found, so say I want to work on something tomorrow, but my pan set looks really um, crusty because I haven't used it for a month or two um, I've just been taking water and spraying it and leaving it overnight um, and then when I come back to it the next day obviously spray a little bit more water in it and then it's perfect to use all these ones I literally just sprayed it and started using them um, because the, well I hadn't I haven't used them for maybe three days um, but they you know just one spray of water on them and they were working perfectly again and um, the way I've been doing this is um, I've always thought when I've seen people like spraying their watercolour pan set I've been like oh that's a bit why why would you need to spray them with water surely having all of that excess water in it would make them crack and stuff um, but with the gouache paints because you want them to be that gorgeous um, creamy consistency um, you need to add that water back into them and also uh, because this is in a palette that you're going to close up and you might well, you pro well, I haven't been letting it completely dry between closing it up because I don't particularly want them to dry out. You know, if I want to use them the next day, I want them still to be a little bit juicy. Um, so when I've been spraying them, I have been using um, distilled water rather than tap water. Um, I've actually been using, it's called deionized water, but they're basically the same thing. Um, I've been using this one that I got from Tesco's, which is just um, the kind of stuff that you would uh, put in batteries or an iron, which stops the um, water from going stagnant and stops uh, too much, like, or well, it doesn't have scaling in it, you know, like, because tap water, especially where I live, it's really hard water, so you get a lot of scale in it. And if you so start spraying tap water into here, you could get, um, like, mould or, you know, just other weird things you get bad smells within your paint as well if you start if you use that so um i've just been using this deionized water but if you didn't have any of this it's really cheap actually i think this was maybe a pound or something uh, for this massive two two and a half liter bottle but um if you didn't have any of this um one step better than just using tap water is to boil your tap water in the kettle leave it to cool and then put that in your spray bottle because that's kind of what distilled water is um and that will just um, get rid of some of the impurities out of the water and hopefully would well it would definitely stop anything growing in your palette more than if you use tap water but I think distilled water or deionized water is the best way to go um, and that way you don't have to worry about anything going on in your palette or a bad smell because if I'm, I made this three weeks ago and they just smell like the paint did fresh out of the tube. There's no bad odour coming from them at all. And it's not very strong. I can only smell it if I've got my nose right near it. So um, that's a plus as well. So uh, some of these palettes, you can see the water is like sitting on top. Or some of the pans, really. You can see the water sitting on top maybe a bit more. Um, and like that white one, it looks a bit dirty. Because I've obviously sprayed water on it and there was probably a bit of other colour in it. But um, if you want to mix them back up again, I've just been taking a 
um, plastic palette knife and you can easily just mix them back up again if you want. Like a lot of my pans are running out. I've already uh, refilled um, I already refilled this one and this one but I've nearly used it all again and I refilled this brown as well because those three have been my favourite for the cactuses I've been painting. Um, but yeah, if you just, I mean obviously you'd clean it off in between but going from this to white to this isn't too bad. But you could just mix them back up again and you can see how liquid that is. That does just look like I squeezed it straight out of the tube but that has been sitting in that pan for three weeks and um, it's still that juicy because of adding the um, deionized water every time I go to use it. Um, and again as well if you want to um, even more stop the any anything from growing in the palette or whatever you can also when you if you use um, water brushes or say your little pots of water you could use that deionized water in there so when you're scooping um, any of the colour out of the pans you're not then putting tap water into them as well but also that was another reason why um, I didn't put too much in each of the pans so that um, if anything did happen to them I'm not wasting much paint at all because I only filled them like a third of the way full um, and also it means uh, that if you're going to be using them a lot when you refill them you get gorgeous fresh paint again much sooner than if you'd completely filled the pan full of it as well so I think I've rambled on about the paint enough I think I've said everything I was going to um, about the paint uh, and now I've got loads of examples um, of techniques and things that I was working on just to see um, I just wanted to see for myself um, how it worked and stuff and I thought it would be good to show it in the video as well so um, I will get on to showing you them now okay so firstly I wanted to show you um, why you might want to use gouache over watercolour um, so this is the gouache paint and on this side of this piece of watercolour paper I have painted on some black gouache and some dark blue and then here I've painted on some black watercolour and some dark blue and I left these to dry, I did this a couple of days ago so that's completely dry just because I didn't want it to um, like mess up my little experiment I wanted them to be completely dry so if I take um, gouache paint and if I pick out a light colour like a yellow, I'll just add a little bit more water into it. Let's go with this one. That one's called mid yellow. And I just mix a little bit of it up with that water to get the lovely creamy consistency. And then I paint it on top of here. I mean yellow is not the best colour maybe because it is, is a little bit translucent. But um, I just wanted to show you as an example. So that is on navy blue and on a dark black and then I also just, I'll show a different colour that's more um, opaque as well. One that's really opaque is this deep green colour. And then I might try one more, maybe white, I'll do white as well. Just to really show you a comparison. And also, as I'm working, I've got a dirty uh, pot of water and a clean pot of water, so I can easily um, clean off my brush as I'm working as well. So now we've got some of the white gouache, and then you can see how lovely and opaque that is on top of um, an undercoat of gouache as well. So um, that's just showing you painting a lighter colour of gouache, or even that darker colour, which is kind of disappearing because it's the same sort of tone. Um, on top of a um, darker uh, bit of gouache as well and then I wanted to show the same thing but with watercolours just to show you the difference between um, how well like how they work how they layer really because um, I often struggle with watercolours so I, I just thought this is one of the things that I really love about gouache that's really made me like love them and really want to work with them a lot more so I'm going to go with this one is the Orlo in yellow I don't know how to say that um, I'm just activating some of that paint from the pan um, I might put it on the palette yeah because obviously 
um, watercolour is supposed to be watery, not thick like um, a gouache. Um, but if I draw that yellow on top of that blue, look, it's almost completely gone. Whereas that yellow on top of the blue is still there. So this is one of the main advantages to using um, gouache over watercolour is that, I don't mean over the top of it, I mean using gouache rather than watercolour um, because you can layer it and you can layer lighter colours on top of darker colours which means you don't have to think so much when you're painting something like you don't have to remember to go around a highlight or something you can easily just add it on afterwards if you'd rather um, or if you've made a mistake and um, painted something the wrong colour you can easily correct it as well um, I'll also go in with a dark green to show because I did a dark green on the other one so a dark colour does show quite nicely on top of the watercolour because um, you can easily layer darker colours or more of the same colour in more layers over the top of um, a watercolour. And then we don't have white um, in this watercolour palette but I don't know, I'll try it with lemon yellow because that's a really light colour from this watercolour palette, which is, this is the Arteza watercolour pan set as well, um, and I'm going to do a whole um, up close video on this as well, if, you, if you're into watercolours and you're not really interested in gouache, you'll probably be interested in that one. So that is having a really light um, colour of paint and, you know, that really doesn't show up much at all, but you can see how brilliantly vibrant that yellow and the white is on top of the um, darker colours of gouache whereas they disappear um, with watercolour. So I just wanted to show that because that is like um, I think it's better to see it like if someone says oh gouache is better than watercolour it's like but why like but why is it better so I just wanted to show you that as an example I mean lots of people do love watercolours and I love the idea of watercolours, they, I just never get the results that I want to get with them but um, I really have been loving the gouache paints because I really love that you can go light to dark, you can go dark to light or you can do both in the same um, thing you're painting so you can start um, out with the mindset of going dark to light but then something else you might want to paint the light on it first and put the dark on afterwards so you can go both ways um, with the paint and also the paintbrush I was just using is one of the little Arteza ones uh, this came in a set of um, 15 and they're, they're, they're called their miniature brushes and you get loads of different ones. I've been using two of them to death because um, every single thing I've been painting recently I've been using those two on. Um, so these two look quite um, used now. I, I was using a spot one and a round one. Both, oh no, one, one was zero and one was two over zero. Um, but you get loads of different ones and you also get some of these ones that they call liner brushes that have the really long bristles. Um, I always thought they were called rigger brushes but they might just have different names. But um, yeah, so those are really great obviously for lining things. So if you um, were painting something and you wanted an outline around it, um, this flows really nicely. You can get really smooth um, lines around things. So those are the brushes I've mostly been using with the gouache as well as... Um, the Nouveau watercolour brushes, um, I've been using those with the gouache as well. They have like a set with a flat one, a, a couple of flat ones and some larger rounds down to smaller rounds. And my favourites um, that I've been using um, is the number four and number three as well. Yeah. So I've been using three and four of the Nouveau ones and then I've been using um, a spot and a round from the Arteza ones just to have a, a good range of different sizes uh, to work with. Uh, then I also wanted to say I got this too. You might have noticed my um, colour charts. So I've got this one from my watercolours and I've got a couple of them in my gouache as well. And you can see how I've drawn them into a grid pattern. Um, I did go over this in the um, video of how I set up my gouache palette as well. But I was using this really cool ruler. It's actually um, a quilting ruler and it's 6 inches by 12 inches and it even comes with these little 3M um, sticky things that if you're using it on fabric I think you stick them to the bottom of the ruler and then it won't slip around on your fabric as you're um, cutting with it. And you're supposed to use a rotary cutter along the edge of it but I have found it is amazing for um, creating grids for your um, colour charts because 
the way it works is if you draw the top line first um, and then say you want a half an inch so this inside of that fluorescent one is half an inch so you would line that up with the line you've just drawn then you would draw your next line then you would take that half an inch line it up with that line draw your next line take that one line up with the next line draw the next line so you don't have to do all of the fiddly little measurements and I think this is also going to be fantastic for um, you know when you want to do like repeat stamping across a panel I tend to just do it completely randomly because I'm too lazy to mark out um, a grid to keep it uniform but using one of these you can just um, draw a line line it up with the inch and then move it over or two inches or whatever um, and really easily section up your card so I just wanted to show that ruler as well because I've been really enjoying that um, I've wanted one of those for ages actually and that one is only 8 99 on the Arteza website um, but I'm sure when I was looking at them in the past they were like £20 and I, I was really off put by the price but um, yeah that's really really good value that one um, so I just wanted to mention that as well. Okay, so I was also trying loads of different techniques using the gouache. So um, I did all these techniques using their watercolours, which will be in my other up-close video looking at their watercolours. And then I thought, why don't I repeat all those experiments for the gouache paints and see um, like maybe the differences or just how they work with those kind of techniques that I like to use. So... Um, I was using this watercolour paper, which is the Arteza Expert watercolour paper. It's the um, the expert one that's still made out of um, wood pulp rather than cotton, because they do do an expert cotton one, but you only get 12 sheets in that pack. But when you get this, you actually get two of these, so you get 64 sheets in total. And they come really well packaged with these... Um, little uh, cardboard corners on all four of the corners so that nothing gets scuffed in the post which is marvellous and what I really love about this watercolour paper is this bit here it's two-sided one side has a sort of cold press textured and the other side is more hot press hot press and it's completely smooth um, and I really love working on um, smooth card but this stuff takes water way better than just normal regular card so I've been really really enjoying um, the two sides of it and that's why I've done quite a few different experiments I've actually been working on both sides for the different experiments to see if they work any differently for the different techniques that I've been playing with as well so, um, one typical technique that you often see people using with watercolour paints is adding salt to the background um, to create a cool uh, textured pattern um, and give some interest to your background. So, uh, this one is working on the rough side. So this is the rough side of the paper, this is the smooth side of the paper and this is with the gouache paints, um, using them more like a watercolour but more a little bit more thickly than watercolour and then just um, sprinkling on some salt and I tend to use a mixture of, um, what's it called, rock salt and... There's another name for it. I can't think what the other name is but I I took a mixture of different the different grain sizes of salt and mix them all into one jar so I've got, oh it's sea salt isn't it, sea salt and rock salt, I mix both of them together so I've got different grain sizes in there. Um, yeah so this, so for this one you want to put uh, water down first then put your paint in and then make sure it's nice and wet and then sprinkle the salt into the areas that are the most wet and then the salt will suck the moisture um, out and leave um, concentrated areas of the paint behind um, in this cool pattern and you can also do this with rice as well um, if you haven't got any salt um, you can do it with rice grains as well um, so I just wanted to show that technique and see for myself if there was any difference between doing the technique on the rough side of the watercolour paper or the smooth side and as you can see um, the salt works equally as well you might get more feathering for the with the rough side because it sort of feathers into the texture of the um, watercolour paper but um, the salt works just as well on the rough and the smooth and just as a comparison this was using watercolour with um, the salt so um, for the gouache I was keeping it in lines for the watercolour I just dotted it all over the place you get a similar result really so um, if you don't have any watercolours but you want to get into some kind of watercolour medium 
um, gouache might be a better option for you because of the things I was saying earlier um, and you can still do all of these cool techniques that you would do with watercolours with your gouache because you can water them down to be more of a watercolour as well if you want them to so I wanted to show you a comparison between that so that is using the gouache with salt then uh, another like well-known technique to use with watercolours is the cling film technique um, and so obviously I wanted to try it with the gouache. This one is on the rough side of that paper, this one is on the smooth side. Um, I use the same colours again but you can see it works amazingly on both the rough and the smooth. I think I prefer on the smooth actually. Um, look at that texture that you get in there and all you're doing there is starting the same way as the salt one adding the water dripping your paint in and then you take cling film and literally just scrunch it in places and place it onto the surface and all of the um, pigment sort of concentrates into the creases um, under the cling film you leave it to dry overnight and when you peel it off you get this really cool texture and also um, I didn't try it, but if you'd dripped in some of the um, pearlescent or metallic gouache paint as well, the um, mica would have concentrated in those um, creased areas too, which looks phenomenal. Um, but I really love how that turned out. And it actually, it does feel quite textured too. Well, not quite textured, but you know, you can feel a little bit of texture in there. And I think that would be marvellous for leaves. Imagine die cutting some leaves out of that. That would look brilliant. So that is the um, cling film technique, and I also did this with um, watercolor, with, yeah, with watercolor to show the difference in that as well. And I think you get a stronger result when you're using the gouache, which is the green version, compared to the watercolor. Um, so that's just another difference as well. So that is that technique. Then I did this technique, which, as you can see, nothing really happened. So this was the. Uh, yeah, this was the rough side and this was the smooth side and for this one I was seeing if the faux bleaching techniques were, technique worked. So you know um, you can like ink blend um, your distress inks onto a piece of card or your oxides and then you can like splat water on it or spray through a stencil and you can dab the water up and pick off the um, colour that was there and it leaves behind a fainter version of the colour and then you have the pattern or the splatters in it. Well with gouache it doesn't really do much so that was just splatting water on and leaving it but I wanted to, um, while you're here, I wanted to try because uh, I think it should lift up so I wanted to try the technique of where you get a wet brush and you sort of scrub at it and then try and lift the colour off of it so I'm going to get a piece of kitchen roll and just to wet my brush and so this is the one on the rough side so let's try this one first so if you um, get a nice lot of water and actually um, use friction to move it so when when I did the original test I just flicked the water on and left it to try and see um, if any of the colour would come up but with this what we're doing now we're actually using um, friction to um, try and move that pigment and this has been drying for um, a couple of days I think um, so I mean this has been yeah it's, it's well definitely dried onto the card so we'll see and it does lift it up so that is like more scrubbing at the paper um, to get that pigment moving again and that was on the rough side of the Arteza watercolour paper and then with the smooth side see how well it works with that I can tell I'm definitely getting pigment up because when I'm putting my brush in my water it's turning it um, a yellowy-orange colour. And obviously if you let the paper dry and did it again you might be able to get more um, colour up as well. So it definitely, um, you definitely can lift the colour. I don't think it would lift back to white. Maybe if you did it straight away it might do. But after leaving them to dry it doesn't... Um, doesn't completely lift but it does lift some of the colour so if you wanted to do like a cool technique did a background like this maybe heat embossed some images on it and then came back in with water in like the petals of the flowers that you'd heat embossed on it you could lift the colour so it would be slightly lighter where um, the pattern was um, so that kind of technique would be brilliant with um, the gouache as well um, yeah so I just wanted to show that and it seems to I don't feel like it's peeled the paper at all really. I think this is just the um, the pigment moving in the texture of the card on this one. But 
it doesn't seem to have messed up the surface of the watercolour paper which is marvellous as well so that's the rough side and the smooth side then um, I wanted to show some other techniques of like using the gouache in a water, more of a watered down form so all of these ones here are using the gouache um, wet in wet so um, how I did these were this was the rough paper and this was the smooth paper and I wanted to see how um, how the normal gouache and how the pearlescent gouache moved from just adding um, them to water so basically what I did was I wet the area that I'd blocked off for the flat gouache it's flat gouache the flat the flat gouache oh my god so the matte gouache is on the left hand side and the pearlescent is on the right hand side of both of these. This is the rough and this is the smooth side of the paper. Um, and so I wet the rectangle and then all I did was pick up some of the gouache on my paint and just touch it to the water to see how much it flowed across the water. And you can see um, they kind of flowed the same. That light pink went really far and the other colours sort of stayed more but it seemed to flow more fluidly on the smoother side and then also the same with the um, pearlescent-y metallic -y colours um, it flowed alright, I mean it didn't completely blend together but um, it on the rough side but with the smoother side because there was no texture to hold it back um, it did blend more and you can see there you've got that um, pearlescent finish on there as well you can just about see that. Um, so that was trying it like that. Now with um, watercolour paints, they often say that if they flowed a lot on water, they're more of a professional um, grade watercolour because it's got something called oxgol in it, which helps um, the wettability of it and it helps it flow within water more. So um, I've been doing these experiments with the watercolour paints which will be in that other video but I wanted to see if adding Oxygol would work the same way or a different way with the gouache. So uh, this is what it is, it's called Oxygol um, and I got the Windsor and Newton one because this was just the cheapest one that was on Amazon and I think it was, I wrote it down somewhere, where did I write it down? I think it was seven ninety nine, seven forty six. It was seven forty six for this, and it says there increases wetting and flow. Um, and all you do with this is it says it on the back. You add three or four drops of water in your cup of water. So you have your water that you're using to wet the um, card, and you put three or four drops of the oxygol into that. So this is how these turned out. So this was the rough one, and this was the smooth one. And with watercolor it would usually be the opposite way around so um, adding the oxygol would make it flow more but with the gouache it seemed to work the other way so adding the oxygol seemed to stop it from flowing as much which I thought was really interesting um, and again that's on the rough side and the smooth side and you kinda got a similar result really but I just thought um, usually you want, you're wanting the paint to flow more and that's why you would add it but maybe with gouache you want to do the wet on wet technique but you don't want it to flow as much so adding the oxygol into your water would help it not flow as much so um, I just thought I'd share that as well it might not be interesting to anybody else but um, I, I just thought it was interesting so I did that technique as well then um, I also was experimenting with um, so these ones I did them on yeah I did them on my white card that I love using and the Arteza watercolor card and there's differences between these two. So for this one, it's all the the gouache and I used some of the metallic gouache as well. But for this one, I used one of these little brushes. So these are you know those makeup brushes that you get on Amazon um, and you use the um, larger ones. They work really well for your ink blending. But when you get these, they come with all these funny little small ones that you're a bit like hmm. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them, but you can use them for your gouache paint or probably watercolour as well because um, they're just like a little paintbrush and they make really great um, stripes across your card because you know you can easily um, brush that straight across your card. So this was doing on watercolour paper and my normal white cardstock that I always use, applying the gouache with this brush while it was dry. So obviously I added a little bit of water to the gouache to get it to mix nicely on my palette and then 
um, I spread it across with one of these brushes that was um, pretty much dry and this is the kind of um, result that you get. You get more of a opaque look to the um, gouache and um, I suppose you're getting more of a streaky, well not streaky, but you can see the brush strokes in it I suppose and, and it's not flowing too much. They're all sort of um, sitting on top of each other getting a nice clean sort of look really and I also went back in with some of the um, pearlescent gouache as well and a smaller brush and obviously I flicked on some as well but the difference I wanted to show was for these ones that look a tiny bit different I actually used um, one of the Arteza water brushes these come in a set of six and you get three flat ones and three round ones and they are really really good I mean I wasn't sure about them to begin with like um, I've heard a lot of good things about them, but I was like, does it really control the water? But it really does. Like, the water control in this is, is marvellous. That The fact that you can um, paint a stripe and you're not starting out with tonnes of water and then getting no water or the opposite way around. It does actually keep it even as you're going. And then if you need a little bit more water, you just press the little um, button that's indicated by the red part. Um, and you would get a bit more water down to the bristles. So I really, really love these brushes. They were working marvellously. Um, but the thing I wanted to show was, so that was using it sort of more dry on this little brush, and this was using it with a water brush. So you get more of a um, watercolour look with this. And it gives you more of a matte finish than a watercolour would maybe give you, but it's not, um, like, it's not too chalky. I mean, sometimes with cheap watercolours you get that chalky finish. But I, I feel like this looks really... Um, nice having the sort of watered down gouache in the stripey pattern as well I just wanted to show the difference between them I'm not sure if anybody would be interested in this either but um, yeah I just wanted to show how if you used gouache with a water brush you would get more of a watercolour look but if you used gouache with um, just a normal paintbrush you could use just one of these as well if you wanted to but I just wanted a use for these little brushes um, but if you use it more like that you're getting it more like a true gouache would look but if you just switch to a water brush you're getting more of a watercolour look so again it gives you um, well, it's another reason to get gouache over watercolour really because you can use it as both um, so that was just that. Then I've got so many different things to show you. But so I was also experimenting with gouache on jelly plate because um, I really love using my jelly plate. I haven't done any videos with it for a while, um, but I did. Re I do really love using it, and I wanted to see um, how it works because I've used watercolors on the jelly plate before, and I've used acrylic paints, but I never tried gouache on it. And um, it's kind of interesting actually. So I, I used um, a silver and two of the blues on it. This is just on the little mini round one. And because, I suppose because gouache is um, more water reactive than um, an acrylic paint is, it kind of beads up more on the surface of the jelly plate. And when you, you, when you um, print with it, it doesn't all merge together like a watercolour would or have a solid finish like an acrylic paint does. The Where it's... Um, pitted apart on the jelly plate it stays in your print and it looks like lacy really with that kind of pattern or even snow falling imagine that with like some um if you just did one of them it could be a snow globe and you could have a little scene um with some snowmen and stuff but it just gives that really um cool speckledy look which i don't know how else you would kind of get that um, in a jelly print but um, I just found that really interesting and then once I'd done these ones I sprayed a little bit more water onto um the gouache I had on my mat and brayed it on again and that gave um, even more of this look so it gave an even more um, lacy effect to the print of the jelly plate so um, I just thought that was really interesting the kind of results that you get with it and obviously you could use um, acrylic paint or watercolour in conjunction with this if you you could have done a watercolour one behind this and then when that's dry do this one on top because the gouache would be more opaque over the watercolour but they'd still both be um more of a water-based thing that would react again with water rather than using acrylic paint um but yeah that was just an experiment and then i had obviously had the paint left on my mat so i just brayed some of the gouache onto another piece of card as well so that's kind of you can get cool brayed effects with it then um, I still had the spare uh, paint out so I thought why not colour some pieces of card um, in different tones so if you don't have much coloured cardstock in your stash why not use the actual colours from 
the Arteza gouache or mix your own shades of colours, adding in white or um, darker tones to create uh, lighter or darker shades. Um, and just paint your own coloured cardstock and then you can create like these cool uh, die cut layered flowers um, and you don't need like five packs of coloured cardstock to create this you can just use any white cardstock you have and um, make your own coloured card and then die cut it out or um, alternatively you could die cut all the pieces out and then paint them if you'd rather um, whichever way is easier for you but I just wanted to show that as well and obviously that's using up excess paint that you have left over too but I thought that was really a cool way of using it and also another cool way of using it is stamping you can stamp with gouache I've stamped with um, acrylic paint quite a lot in the past but um, the gouache looks really gorgeous actually um, and it almost gives the same kind of um, chalk finish as um, a distress oxide would but because it was a paint it gives a bit more of a texture to it as well and the um, pearlescent colours and the matte colours work just as well as each other as well so you could have done um, a washy background maybe even like the stripy background that I showed before and then come back in with that bronze colour and then you could have stamped some images on top of it um, with the you know the pearlescent gouache as well so you can, can easily mix and match all these techniques and I'm sure there's hundreds more different things you can do with it as well um, and then I just use the same kind of colours to create that flower as well and obviously you can do your sentiments with this too so you can paint your card and cut a sentiment out to match your project as well um, but I just really loved how it looked um, stamping with it and splatting with it as well I love doing my splats too so um and all I did for stamping with it was I squirted a little bit out of the tube, put it onto my mat, got a little bit of water, mixed it up with my paintbrush to make it more of a painty consistency and then I just spread it out with my finger or you can use your paintbrush and then you just take your stamp, stamp it in it um, and then stamp it on your card. And I mean you can um, get a really more of a crisp image with it or you can get more of a patchy broken up image. Um, and I think both look really nice on different projects and this would look marvellous in your art journaling as well so not just cards, art journaling would be brilliant then a similar theme to that was, I did this one first actually I was using the gouache with um, a piece of cut and dry foam and I actually did this yesterday because I wanted to see how this dried and it still dries squishy so if you want to use your gouache paints with cut and dry foam it's not going to dry rock hard like when you use acrylic paint it's still squishy so you can keep using this without having to wash it out which is nice because I'm lazy and I always forget to wash them um, but so this was stenciling through uh, a mask that has a uh, patterned edge and, a, and another little pattern of a, a mask and I was using a couple of pink colours um, and a couple of purple colours and I did also use a bit of the metallic but I'm not I think I mixed it too much with the matte colours and the metallic's not really showing um, and then I was also um, once I'd finished tapping the paint through the stencil I sprayed the stencil and flipped it over and printed it down here so that works marvellously as well and I also did that um, on this part of it too and then I still had lots of the um, paint on this Moroccan stencil so I also sprayed it a bit more and then printed it again and you got this more of an outline look um, which I thought was nice and I did actually spray this with loads of water um, and it didn't budge much so again just spraying it with water it doesn't move too much but let's see if we add a bit of friction um, with the water and see if it moves my water is a funny colour now because of doing it for the last time but um, no, the line work still does stay there. That the colour that's a bit there is just my dirty water, but so the line work does um, stay there, which is really nice. So you know you can do these cool. I mean, I I, I don't want to mess this one up because I like it, but um, I presume if you did that on top of this, um, the line work would stay more where it is. So yeah, I just wanted to show those little techniques as well. Then I've got some more bits and pieces that I've been painting too, so I'll show you them now. Okay, before I forget, I did just want to show you how the pearlescent colours look as well because I didn't really show you this up close. So this was my original swatch and I wasn't impressed with the top row. They don't look very pearly at all, but these the bronze and gold look nice and um, pearly and metallic. But the other ones I was a little bit um, disappointed by because straight onto this Arteza watercolour card, they just were a bit underwhelming. But 
if you um where's my little paintbrush gone if you paint with them onto um some gouache you've already painted they become a lot more metallic uh what color should i use let's use this silver you can mix them on your palette and mix loads of different colours as well. That's now just gone greeny because I put it on there. Um, but they they just become um, way more reflective and metallic when you use them on top of something that's matte rather than just straight onto um, watercolour card, which I think is really great too because I like adding like extra details on top of something that I've coloured in. Um, so I don't know if you can see it before it's dried properly, but... Hmm. maybe you can't really see it that well let me try a different colour let's go with that orange I've just contaminated with my silver now <laughs> anyway okay You can kind of see that it gives more of a um, reflective look than it did just straight onto the card. You get more of that metallic-y, pearlescent look when you um, paint it onto a matte surface first. I'm not sure if you can really tell. You can tell on some of my drawings that I've done. So, um, yeah, I wanted to show you all the drawings as well. But I just wanted to show that too. So, let me just clean that. Then... So some of the bits and pieces that I have been doing, the first things I did were these, not that one, these cactuses. Um, and this was actually the first thing I painted with gouache, was this cactus. And I just um, googled on the internet, I just wrote in like um, cactus images. Um, and then I just drew out some little designs and uh, added the gouache onto them. And I thoroughly enjoy painting these so much. There's probably like 10 hours worth of work in there, but um, I enjoyed it so much. Um, but there, you can really see that. So these spikes on this one, you can really see how um, metallic or pearlescent the gouache is. And on this one, the spikes as well, you can see that gold really appears. So once you um, add it over the matte colours, it does really appear much more than just when you're swatching it onto straight onto watercolour card. Um, yeah, so I had so much fun painting these, and this is where I was really enjoying working dark onto light or light onto dark, whichever way I fancied it, really. Um, so, like, this one, this one was a completely different green to begin with, and then I kept adding different colours in to try and make it look more how I wanted it to, and um, I was mixing a lot of my own colours for these as well, just to try out uh, mixing... Like, so in some cases I was mixing with white to get lighter tones. Some cases I was mixing with the lighter colours that are in the set. Like, there's um, a really pale yellow. Um, and so some of the greens I was mixing with that really pale yellow. So you got more of a yellow tint to the green as well as adding the sort of white tone to it as well to make it lighter. Um, so I had lots of fun um, just playing with these and drawing freehand and stuff. And then um, more freehand stuff. I, I wanted to try and paint a feather. Ignore those geese, they look horrible. But um, I was just trying to paint a feather and, and see how they layered nicely together. And you can see that gorgeous um, metallic um, sheen on there as well. But look how how lovely they overlap and everything. If I tried to do that with watercolour, one, I would be way too impatient to let the layers dry properly between um, the layers of watercolour because the gouache dries quite quickly which is brilliant um, and two it just would never turn out looking that nice so that's another reason why I really love the gouache you can also do your sort of uh, lettering with gouache as well it's not very good but you know I was trying um, and then uh, what else was I going to say yeah about the gouache drying really quickly oh this is the um, mixed media pad that I showed in my other two up close videos with our teaser products um, I've really been enjoying this. It works really nicely with the gouache actually as well. Um, yeah, so the gouache, it dries quite quickly. I mean, it has been really hot at the moment, um, so that probably doesn't help. But, like, on your palette, it dries quite quickly as you've been mixing your own colours. But, again, um, a bottle of distilled water is your best friend because you can you can just have a spray onto the palette and 
move it with your brush and it reactivates it again so it's really easy to rejuvenate the paint which is brilliant um, but also with it drying reasonably quickly um, it means you can do all those um, cool layers like to get these a shadow and a highlight and stuff on cactuses and things um, or the stripes on the cactus you can do that um, relatively quickly so for this one I painted the main bit of the cactus then I went and painted the pot and then by the time I painted the pot this bit was dry so I could paint the flower and then by the time the flower was dry I came back and did the stripes on the cactus you know so even working on tiny little things like that it was drying relatively quickly which was really good um, so then I also did these freehand um, leaves I was just uh, playing around with those tiny um, thin uh, detail brushes as well um, and mixing in some of the uh, pearlescent colours and having some fun splatting and trying to draw some freehand sort of leafy designs as well um, I just wanted to see how nicely it flowed and this was actually working on um, this is some of Tonic's watercolour card I think yeah it is, it's some of Tonic's watercolour card so it works really nicely on the Tonic watercolour card too um, so yeah, that was another little experiment that I was doing. And then I also thought, well, a lot of people might not want to draw their own images or paint something freehand, so um, you can use them with your stamps as well. So I was using these stamps, um, they're the tonic ones that came out recently, they're journaling stamps. Um, and this was the first thing that I painted. I'm actually going to make this into a thank you card and send it to Arteza for... Um, as a thank you for sending me all their gorgeous products to play with um, and this one I actually I painted in or I painted over all of the detail with the solid colours first then I came back in added some sort of shadows and highlights and things and then I came back in with those really fine Arteza brushes and a darker colour and instead of like over stamping the stamp to get the detail back in um, I just drew the detail back on and I did actually follow the detail from the stamps for these ones um, so I added the wiggly lines and the circles back on the flowers, up on the leaves, um, and I added this scallop detail back on the leaves and this uh, pattern with the dashes on back onto the flowers and stuff. Um, and I really love how that worked out. And this was using that 300 GSM white cardstock that I'm always using, um, which I'll link below as well. Um, and I just had so much fun painting this. I think it maybe took me an hour and a half, two hours to paint all of that, but again with that quick drying of the gouache I was working on one part moved to another part then the first part was dry and it was really easy to um, go back and move to another section and also because you're working with the gouache and it's opaque um, like this leaf obviously when I stamped it this leaf was over the top of this leaf because I didn't bother masking it because you don't need to because you can just paint straight over the top of it and even if you decide later that you wanted that leaf to be in front of this leaf you could just paint over it and it would completely cover this leaf that's in front of it now and you could make the other leaf in front of it so um, if you don't like masking but you love that no line colouring look um, you could easily use your gouache to do that because you don't have to worry about which image is going to be in front of what because you're going to paint straight over it again um, so yeah and obviously to get the details back in this because I painted over it I then couldn't see the details because I'd stamped it in a light colour ink so um, just make sure you've got the stamp set near you so if you have the stamp set right next to you you can easily um, just see what the detail was that the original designer put on it and then you can just paint it back in yourself and those brushes really allow you to get that gorgeous fine detail and all these little dots that I drew in here are all with those brushes as well um, and all around the, the little leaves and everything so I've really been enjoying those brushes as well as the paint and you can see that gorgeous matte finish that you get I really love the matte look I didn't put any metallic on uh, this painting but I loved this so much and I was like if I'm going to give this away it's like oh, but I really love how it turned out so I made my own version as a little art journal page in this um, mixed media pad so I added the phrase, bloom where you are planted, and I was attempting some scripty writing, didn't turn out that great, but, you know. Um, and I used the same stamps, um, stamped it in a similar configuration, but I also added in some of my own hand-drawn elements, 
Um, obviously I'd just been doing uh, that one and I thought oh I want to do some more of that so I added that into this and obviously I drew in some smaller little flowers to bring that blue back in um, and I added some smaller yellow flowers to balance out the yellow centre of the um, actual flowers that are there but you can see that these look different to each other they're the same stamp but for this one I didn't go back in with the same detail that was on the original stamp I added my own shadows and highlights where I wanted them I went back in with metallic gouache and added these um, details down the petals rather than going back in and doing this detailing and for um, the main flower I didn't do this pattern that was on the original one I just drew in some stroke lines and added my own shadow around them and for the centre of it I added a swirl in the centre um, and then like wherever I felt like I needed more foliage um, I, didn't, I did use some of these stamps in here and I just added them solidly and didn't add all of the pattern detail back on them but in other places I drew in my own or um, like for this one I extended it because this little stamps only stamps to about here with those little berries on but you can just extend it and then add your own flicks of blades of grass in it as well and use the brown tones as your ground and everything I just had so much fun um, doing these and adding like little flowers to this um, stamp it's, the stamp actually looks more like that but without adding or drawing the outline back onto it um, it gives a much softer look to it and I added the little flowers onto it as well so there are loads of different ways of using your gouache in your um, crafting like to do your sort of no line colouring or you can add the lines back in with those really fine paint brushes as well then I also wanted to try um, doing some characters I really want to um, paint some of the lawn fawn characters with this gouache I think they would look brilliant um, but for the time being I just tried some of the tonic ones so that's the gorgeous little skunk that's in one of their adorable set and he does look so adorable painted in gouache because you haven't got the lines of the image so he looks softer and more like um, a storybook character or something from a children's book um, also I did the little snail because I love snails and I did the little hedgehog as well, trying to do um, a lot of brush strokes to give him that spiky look. I did do the gopher, but I didn't like how he turned out as much. And I did the little carrot, but, you know, a carrot's not really that difficult to paint. Um, so I was trying those. This was on the smooth side of the Arteza watercolour card. This was the 300 GSM card I like using, and this is the mixed media paper um, from their sketchbook. So, like, all the card that I usually use... Um, works brilliantly. I haven't found anything they don't work nicely on so um, that's another good reason um, to use these over watercolours because you can work on anything with them and they look brilliant. Then, um, was that everything? Oh, there was one, yeah there was one more thing I was going to show. Um, so with the cactuses, I think cactuses are kind of in again at the moment um, but I thought if some people want to do cactuses but they don't want to draw their own, I've got this stamp set. Um, it was a woodware stamp set. It came out a little while ago. It's called um, Succulents um, and it just has these gorgeous little cactuses on it. So I thought I would quickly show you how um, I was painting this with gouache to give it that sort of no-line feel. This one's not finished yet but I wanted to be able to show you up to this stage and then carry on without having to wait for it to dry. So. Um, I'll get my stuff together and then I will show you that. Sorry, this video is going to be so long. Okay, so I've got my gouache palette. I've got my favourite two paintbrushes that I've been using for all of these paintings, which is the uh, Nouveau one, which is the number three, because I just wanted something a bit bigger than the Arteza ones. And then I've got the two over zero round one from Arteza as well. And then... So for the um, stamping, you can stamp in a light colour if you want to, or if you only have darker colours, you can stamp off on some paper first and use a second generation of ink. Um, for this one, I just used this ink full strength, and you can see pretty much all of the lines have disappeared underneath the gouache. So I'm just going to show you that again, because it'll be um, easier for you to see on the camera as well. So I will paint the same cactus that I just... Um, did and I'm just using this lawn fawn ink but any um, grey ink you have it can be water reactive it can be a permanent one it doesn't really matter at all this is just their little manatee ink pad um, so I'm just going to stamp the image um, and again you can use a lighter ink because when you're at home you can 
um, you'll easily be able to see the lines. Whereas if I'm painting on the camera, you wouldn't be able to see it if it was any lighter than that, really. Um, so that's the image stamped out. I'm just going to move this, actually, because it's kind of in the way. Okay, I can move this over now. So, um, to begin with, how I want to work is you want to make sure you've got um, a clean water and your dirty water. Um, obviously that would be clean to begin with, but I've been using mine a lot. Um, so, then with the colours, I was actually using this gorgeous colour here, which is the sage green. It's one of my favourites, and I really have been enjoying using that um, for these cactuses. And I filled this one up again, so I went through the whole like third to a half a pan I'd already put in there and all I've been doing is just taking a little bit out and adding it to anywhere on my palette where I'd already had green um, so it kind of it's mixing a little bit with the other green that was underneath there because obviously this gouache reactivates really nicely um, but if you wanted to change the colour tone a little bit you can just take a dab of any of the other greens um, and put them oh I touched something and got another bit of colour on it um, but yeah, you can so you can mix anything. You could even mix a little bit of a blue in it if you wanted to. I think I did pick up the blue from there. But anyway, so you want to have a little bit of water in it because you want it to be able to give you a smooth line when you're painting with it. So if I zoom in, um, all you want to do is just begin painting with it and obviously go right up to the line and you can go over the line as well because it doesn't matter um, if we can't see the line. And you can see here... As I'm painting, that looks really dry brushy, which obviously means I haven't got quite enough water on my paint, so or in my paint. So I want to take a little bit more water. Now I've got some brown in there as well. <laughs> this green is going a funny colour, but anyway. Um, so I want to take a little bit more water just so I can get some smoother edges um, as I'm painting. You, yeah, again, you can add a lot of water to gouache to make it into a watercolour, but um, if you already have watercolours, you're probably better off using your watercolours. But if you only had gouache, then you can use them as watercolours if you want to. But I do prefer um, using them in the sort of thicker consistency because it gives that gorgeous matte look, which I really love. So um, I'm not very good at talking and painting at the same time, but I'll try and stay inside the lines. Um, I just wanted to show you how I did this because I, I know I'll probably get someone asking um, how I've done this, like how I do the little paintings and stuff. So obviously if you like doing your own drawing, this would be your drawn image that's here. Um, and this, you see this green, I don't know why, but this green isn't covering that um, stamped image as much, even though I use the same ink. Um, but if I just take a bit more of that, I suppose it's because this one's got a lot of um, white in it, and if I've just been diluting it with other colours, then it's going to be a little less um, opaque. Although as it's drying, they're kind of disappearing a bit more. But with the gouache, the lovely thing is, you can just go back over it. And you can wait for it to dry, you can um, blend colours um, wet into wet as well. Um, it's really forgiving, it's really lovely to work with. And again, if you go outside the lines, as you saw with our little test earlier, you can scrub up the colour. So if you've just gone out of the line, it should lift off um, much better than the one that I showed you where I'd left it to dry for ages as well. So uh, that's just the base colour. And then for the uh, pot, I was just using a little bit of an orangey um, colour and a yellowy colour as well. And just painting in the pot just like I did with the cactus so nothing very difficult um, just to add a little bit of paint you don't really need to see me do the whole thing when I've got one that's already done for the next step so basically what you do the first step is to um, completely cover the image and actually I'll just show you how I did the spikes on this cactus as well so all I did was take that really lovely um, 2 over 0 round Arteza brush and then I got a little bit of that same green that I just used for the base of the cactus and all I did was literally just paint it over the stamped image just to give those spikes the green colour rather than the grey that I just stamped them in so they um, all fit with the theme then. So 
Then once you've done that flat layer, you're then left with this image here. So to add a little bit of shadow to this cactus, all I was doing was picking the same colour I just had. And I'm going to go with a darker shadow on this one. So let me zoom out. Whoa, that's the wrong way. So I was just picking some of that same colour that we were just using, putting it back on the palette where it was, and then literally clean your brush and then pick another green colour that you want to use to make a bit of a deeper tone. So I'm going to go with that one, which is seaweed, um, and just put a little bit of that in there, and it, you can see it's deepened it. And then I'll add a little bit more seaweed, and that might be too much, but anyway. I'm just adding, so um, what did I say before? The dark colours dry lighter. I have to keep trying to rem remember that for myself as well. So um, this would dry slightly lighter than than it um, looks now. So uh, if we wash this brush off and we go back to the little baby brush again for this and pick up some of that colour and then all I did was um, just decide which side I wanted the sort of shadow to be on. I've just done it in a really cartoony style, it's not very realistic at all um, just because I prefer that kind of a look and then you can just go and add the shadow on like that um, and again to the um, little arms of the cactus as well just like that and then if you feel like that would dry too harshly you could then um, take a little bit of that original colour again and mix it in with some of that dark you just made to make an in-between colour that's in between the first colour and the second colour and then you could just um, paint a line of that on as well to sort of soften that if you thought it was too harsh. Some of the ones I did do this, some of the ones I didn't so um, it's just whatever you feel like really. And also we're going to add stripes on this one because there were stripes on the original stamp so um, that will sort of get hidden a little bit. This probably isn't as good as if I was just sitting here in a daydream painting but it gives you the idea of how um, I was building up the... Oh, you can't even see that because I was too far away. <laughs> there you go, that's what I was doing. Um, just adding the darker colour and then the lighter colour to sort of blend it out a little bit and we could maybe add a little bit more of that darker here so it looks like that arm's coming out further behind the cactus then you just want to leave that to dry and then to add a bit more detail to the actual flower pot um, I think I want to take some red and mix it with um, a bit of that orange that I had before try to mix on the vertical of this palette now um, and just so it's a little bit darker and we can add that kind of a, a highlight on the or low light shadow on the pot as well just to keep that theme together and also adding in a darker colour will hide more of the stamp lines if you want to as well so just I'm just doing this like out of my head I'm not following anything so you can colour it however you want to but I'm just going to do that for it and then maybe add a little bit on the base of the pot as well and then with the um, the blue on here, I think I might go in with a slightly darker blue than what I actually used to paint that stripe on there and again add a little bit of it over here, that might not be um, dark enough to show up but it will give a little bit of variation and then later on we're also going to come back in with the metallic colours to add some extra details to this as well. So. Once we've done that, this is this dry yet? Yes, that's dry already. See how quickly it dries? It's really good because you don't have to wait too long, which is brilliant. So I'm going to go back in with that seaweed colour and pick some more of that out and make this colour even darker. So we're going darker than the shadowy colour that we made before. And you can just go back into this. Um, so, like, if you look on my palette here, I've got the 
light green, the medium green and the dark green all in the same splodgy mess on my palette. So that's what I tend to do as I'm working with something. You can see, well in this purple really, there was a darker tone underneath there and there was probably an even darker tone underneath that. And then as you're working up your layers or it could be you know, lighter on top of darker, darker on top of lighter, but as you're working through your layers you can just add more white or add more of a dark colour to create the different tones and you can use the same area on your palette to do that. Oh wow, <laughs> when did I do that? <laughs> I've just seen that I smudged that cactus's pot everywhere. This is why you uh, should work this side to that side, not work on a wet one and then go back to there. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So we've now got that darker colour on the paintbrush and then all I was doing, um, you can go back and look at the stamp actually if you'd rather. Should we do that? So if we keep, oh no, let me widen that. So if we have the stamp in our hand we can see where the stripes were. Um, so it was one going down the centre of that and then we have one right down the centre of the cactus. It's getting quite thick. <laughs> and then two more of them. Obviously you would take more time over this and not be holding a stamp in the other hand. And you can also, oh wow that was thick, um, you can also add an outline to it as well if you want to. And then there's just one stripe going down the other arm as well. So that's how the original stamp looked. And again that will dry a bit lighter because the darker colours dry lighter. But you can also um, go back in and add a bit of an outline around um the image as well if you want to and if you use a lighter hand you'll get um, thinner lines and you can wipe extra paint off on your kitchen roll as well I don't know if anyone's going to be that interested in how to to do this but I thought I might as well throw it in the video so it's already there if anyone is interested I've just loved um, doing this so much. I really wish I had bought some um, gouache sooner because you, I keep hearing about it and then I've just been like, oh, do I really need it? But I really wish I had bought it sooner because I've loved it that much. So I'm just going to add a little bit of dark to some of these spiky bits but we're going to add in some of our own spikes with the um, metallic colour as well. Okay, so obviously you would spend more time on that and make that look um, a little bit neater. And again, because we've added the lines around um, the cact... Oh dear, I've just lodged some water on there. Oh no. So it does lift quite well when it's wet. Anyway, let's try and fix it. Mm, that'll do. Um... Yeah, so because we've added the lines around the cactus, it kind of looks a bit funny not having the lines around the pot now. So if we go back in and take a slightly darker orangey colour and mix some of that. And then get a little bit on our brush and add um, more of a defined line around the pot. I think it needs to be darker. A bit of red. Need some more water. You can easily tell when you need more water because it does do that sort of um, scratchy thing that looks more like acrylic paint where it's a bit drier. But you want it to be nice and flowy on your brush so you get those nice smooth lines. I think I'm just going to add a red line across the top as well, just because it'll be a bit quicker. And then we're going to add some detail with the metallic colours as well. And I'll show you how to um, mix some of your own metallic colours so they go with your colour scheme a bit more as well. So i just leave it like that for the pot of this cactus. Then I will put this palette away and get my little one out. 
my little baby palette. So, so these, oh, let me zoom out again. These are the colours that we get in this palette, but that green is maybe not going to be quite the right green. So what you can see, I've been doing it on the um, on the mixing palette for this one. I'm going to spray these again because, as I said before, the metallic ones seem to dry out a little bit quicker than the matte ones. Um, so you can see here, I've been mixing bluey green tones. So I think I might go with a a bluey green tone again. So if we get some of the green. You can see how quickly that reactivates, like, it's really good. And again on the palette it reactivates really quickly too. And you don't really need to mix up too much of this colour, although it's still, it will still be there for the next time you want to use it. Um, but yeah. And then a little bit of the blue as well. So it makes more of a, a bluey green, maybe we want more of a yellowy green actually. Um, let's mix a bit of gold in it as well see what that does. Just why not, might as well experiment. There you go, that gives more of the green that we want, I think. And again, another tip um, I heard somewhere, and it is a really good tip, um, as well as having the two pots of water, the dirty and the clean one, um, don't mix with the same brush that you're just going to paint with. So I want to paint with this one now, so I was mixing with the bigger one, because um, otherwise you'll go to paint with it and you'll get, have loads of like um, unmi unproperly mixed colour near the ferrule and then you end up painting with weird colours and stuff so I just found it's easier as well. So let's zoom in and do some little spines on this cactus. Um, so on the actual stamp the only spikes are on the outside of it so I'm going to go over some of the outside spikes and then we can add some of our own as well. So obviously the ones that I was painting in my sketchbook were just um, like made up ones so I was putting the spines wherever I wanted them. I mean I did follow a picture to draw them but I wasn't using it as a like a proper reference when it came to adding in all my own little details. Okay, so then I think add a few the centre. I'll tilt this in a light in a second so you can see it better as well. Okay, I think that looks alright. Maybe kind of went a bit splodgy. <laughs> it's just a, an example to show you. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so that is what it looks like with the spines on it. You, that went really messy there. But um, you can see how the metallic colours look so much more metallic and pearlescent when you've put them on top of um, the matte gouache, which I really, I really like that actually. Because if you look on here, I mean I know I mixed a few of them together, but it really doesn't look that pearly on there. But as soon as you've added it on top of um, the matte gouache, it shows up a lot nicer. And then we want to add some stuff to our pot as well. So definitely the blue, because I really love their blue colour. So just I just find it easier, even, even if I'm using the pure colour from the pan, it's easier just to put some onto your palette and add the amount of water you want to get it that nice consistency that you like to paint with. Um, it's just much easier that way. And also, actually, whilst we're looking here, do you remember when I was painting that one, it looked quite a bit darker than this one, but you can see now, now it's dry, um, they do look the same colour, and adding that shading on really made a difference as well. Um, yeah, so anyway, back to the blue. Um, so maybe, maybe, actually, let's add some blue dots along this top piece. And you can be as detailed um, as you like with the gouache as well. You can obviously do bigger paintings too, or bigger images like um, lots of stamps these days you can get really large like A5 or A6 images um, I just like small things so that's why I've been really enjoying painting tiny little things okay so there I just did dots along that top one and I did outlined that chevron and did dots in the little um, 
triangles as well and then I think I might go in with a bit of gold too and obviously you can do as much or as little of the metallic colours as you want or the pearly colours um, or you don't have to add them at all if you just wanted to experiment with gouache you could just get the um, 24 set that Arteza do as well but if you think you're going to enjoy it um, I really do recommend going for the 60 set because you've got like every single colour you're going to need there as well and also, I was going to say this too at the beginning and I forgot, um, the way I've set up my palettes, if you set them up like that, maybe there's uh, you and a couple of other friends that wanted to try gouache. If you all buy your own separate empty palette, you can all make your own palette from the same 60 set of gouache, so you can split the cost of the set of gouache between the three of you um, and all get your own gouache palette out of it, um, which I thought would be a really good idea. Because actually, the um, video I filmed making a making and setting up a palette is not these ones that I've done it's a separate one that I made for my mum because she wanted to try them all as well so um yeah you can make them for a mul multiple uh, friends if you all want to share the same set of gouache which is really nice okay then I'm just drawing on some gold hearts onto this one and what else let's just do um, a stripe right underneath that red stripe. I really love these fine brushes from Arteza. They are brilliant for all the little details and especially if you want to paint stamped images they often have tiny little details so that is my finished little cactus and that is one of the succulent stamps and it's a woodware stamp set. I'll try and find it. Hopefully I can. Hopefully they still sell it. Um, I made some cards with these ages ago, maybe like two years ago and I actually stamped little glasses on them and they look really adorable with glasses on but you can see all those, um, you can see that way these hearts don't look anything special at all but as soon as you shine them in the light that gold um, pearlescent colour really shows up and same with the spines on the cactus as well so I really think those pearlescent colours make a really good difference okay so I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at the 60 set of gouache watercolour -y paints from um, Arteza and um, how I've been using them, um, like the cool techniques that you can do with them for your card making and everything, um, and just like an up close look at all the colours you get and everything, and a little background about gouache and why you might want to use gouache over watercolour as well. And don't forget, all of the products that I have, um, that from Arteza that I've shown in this video, were kindly sent to me by Arteza, and also they gave me a 10% um, discount code crafty potential 2 which I will put down here and I'll also put as the first thing in the description box so you can easily copy and paste it and if you use my links in the description below there'll be a little arrow and you press the little arrow and the whole description will appear um, so those links that are in there underneath all the different products that I've shown um, if you click on them and use this code when you check out you'll get 10% off your order on the Arteza UK or the Arteza USA websites as well and um, those are affiliate links as well so I'll get a small commission from um, anything that you buy and no extra cost to you so if you do use those links thank you very much I really do appreciate it and obviously you get your um, goodies at 10% off as well so um, it's a win-win for both of us so I hope you enjoyed um, the video and there will be another one very shortly showing um, an up-close look at the Arteza half pan watercolour set and there will also be um, the full video of how I set up um, a gouache palette using the Arteza gouache colours as well so um, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for those and thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video bye <laughs>